Hi, and on this video, we're going to talk and go through the very basic steps in how to auto mount drives to your Linux distro installation. So the main cause for this will be, or the main use case for this will be basically if you've got a Windows Server, um, a true NAS, a Synology, those kind of things, or any other kind of NAS application where you're sharing a folder structure or a file or disks, dependent upon whether it's in a Samba one, which is a Windows based one or NFS, which is more Linux based, then we can absolutely map those to your Linux distro. Now I'm going to show you this in Ubuntu, but the process is pretty much the same for every single one of those. So let's get on with it. So I'm going to show you how to go about mounting in two different scenarios, one using NFS and the other using Samba. Now when we use Samba, we do need to install an application, which is CIFS utils. So we'll start with Samba just because it's probably the most common one that people are going to use unless they're already using a Linux distro. Uh, they're more than familiar with the Windows file sharing content, which is the SMB. So all I'm going to do is go through this process fairly straightforward uh, with you. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is just do a, sam, a sudo apt. I'll make this a little bit bigger sudo apt update that needs to just to make sure we've got all the very latest repositories and it does say there is two packages can be upgraded but i'm pretty sure it's not actually going to do any but there we go that's kind of done that early section that we need to do so it's just to make sure that we're updating our repos and upgrading any that we need to do however what i want to do now is basically do an install of cifs utils and it will basically pull down that package, which is what we need it to do. So that's going to pull down that package. Uh, we're now in a good state. So let's just, again, reset that terminal. So it's a little bit easier to read. And then what we're going to do is just basically create a couple of directories just in readiness for what we're doing. So let's currently see where we are. Now we should be in our home directory at the moment. So as you can see, um, what I'm going to do is make a couple of directories in um, uh, the mount location. So as you can see there, I'm basically mount, making one there. And I'm going to make an NFS one as well in readiness for a little bit later on. So there we are. That's created those two. So if I wanted to find those, just to prove that uh, they do exist, if I do a CD slash, that should take me back to root. I should then be able to go CD mount and then do an ls and i can see those two there which is great now to get back to my home just the cd as it is and it will bring me back to my home which i know that's my home because that's where all my home box stuff sits for example now what we do need to do is create a smb uh, credentials file now the reason we need that is is because we do need to pass the credentials through um, into our FS tab environment. So what I'm going to do is just run the following command. Uh, it's cut that first bit off, but basically it's sudo nano. So you can use vim if you don't want to use vim. You'll notice I use nano. Uh, it's going to put that in the home directory. The dot presets means that it's a hidden file, which is exactly what we want. And basically we'll apply that. Now there is a uh, standard process for how these are run. So basically, I'm going to copy those in, but basically they are the following. So you'd have your username, password, domain, etc. Now, I'm going to just save mine at the moment because I don't want you to see what my uh, username and password is. So I'm just going to go back in and edit those and then we'll come back. Okay, so mine are all now saved. Now you don't need to use the domain part. It's kind of an optional one, but obviously if you do have set up a domain, then you can use it. You can just use the standard work group one as well. Um, if you're particularly sharing, say, from a, a Windows device or a Windows server, then that's probably the easiest way to go. I use all of mine within TrueNAS, so mine is done slightly differently. Now the next thing is, is to make that uh, element private so to basically mean that only I can read and write etc to this so I'm going to run a sudo chmod and do that now if you want to know exactly what that code 600 does I'll pop it up on the screen right now but that's now run. So that sudo credentials file has been created, which is fantastic. Now, another couple of things that I might want to know at this point is what my uh, user ID is 
and my group ID. Now there's a good reason for this is because what will happen is that when you pass through um, information to your mount, you may want to make sure that you've got explicit privileges, even though you may have set them up on your uh, NAS solution to basically go and uh, apply those to this folder as well. So as you can see there, mine are the standard 1000 and 1000, which makes my life easy. So again, those two commands are ID, hyphen u and id hyphen g so the next step would be to update the fs tab file so the fs tab file sits in etc fs tab now you can navigate there and go and do it yourself however what i'm going to do is just basically show you the commands you can run it from anywhere and you will know that you're in the right one because you'll be presented with the following so as you can see below, there's already some information in here, but what I'm going to do is pass in some information. So this is one I've already created, but what I'll do is talk you through it. So let's start at the very beginning. So here is my root. So this will be my true NAS. So the IP link to my true NAS device and the share. So the SMB share for that is ISO. Uh, the mount path will be mount, which we created earlier, SMB, ISO. Uh, the CIFS, which is the application we installed earlier so that's how we're using it so that's the controls the credential file is linked to there as you see we created that earlier so that went to my home express it now obviously if your user uh, your home user is different you'll just need to go and change that uh, i've linked the uid and gid to those as well and then these two zeros you don't need to worry about them you will need them um, but basically that one just refers to whether it's going to dump the fire um, dump the um, the mount and this one does a file system check which you don't need to do because you'll be doing that somewhere else now if you want to change that you absolutely can i think the toggles are just one so um, but that will do that will literally do exactly what we want it to do from a point of mounting samba so i'll just go show you how that works so if we just do a control x uh, y and save and now mount that device. If I do sudo mount A, that should be mounted. And we can prove that by going to the following. So if we go to CD mount SMB ISO and then do an LS, you can see all of the mounts or all of the ISOs that I mounted there earlier and they're now all accessible to me which is great. So let's go back and now do NFS. Now, so when it comes to doing the NFS side of it what we do need to do is basically install again an application. So this one is the NFS common so again it's sudo apt install NFS forward slash common that's going to go away and install itself and then what I'm going to do is go into sudo nano etc fs tab and you'll see here's one i created earlier so the, the beauty of the way that it works with nfs is slightly different so we go 192.168.32.204 uh, then we proceed it with um, colon forward slash the actual absolute path so mine is running on spinny media so the mount is mount slash spinny slash iso where we want to mount it to internally uh, we're using NFS, uh, we can use defaults, there are some other options if you want to go find out what they are, um, there's a few links in the description that will help, and again the same process with these two zeros, so those two dump credentials, so again they're pretty good, and then all we'd need to do is basically do your sudo mount forward slash a, and if we now do an ls, because I'm already in there, we can see all of our mounted drives. Fantastic. So one other thing you may want to check on both the Samba and the NFS share is to make sure your permissions are set correctly. So the easiest way to do that is just do an LSL. Uh, sorry, an LS space L. And what that will do is show you that your local user, which in my case is Express IT, does have read, write, read, read permissions. So the interesting thing would be is can I create a file in here? sudo touch test.text and the easiest way to find out if that has worked is if I bring over my screen now so let's just minimize that 
and drag that over, you can see that my test document has appeared. So I know I can write to the drive. So yeah, that is how you go about basically uh, mounting both your Samba or NFS shares. And the good thing is anytime you reboot, it will be there and present. So hopefully you found that video useful. Like I mentioned at the very beginning, this was one of the hardest things I found to crack at very early on when I moved over into home labbing and using Linux. So hopefully this has been a bit of a godsend to people and hopefully help them try to fix and remedy some challenges they may have about auto mounting. Now I will say that you deliberately notice I mounted mine into the MNT location. Now that's just for cleanliness, um, but also for the fact of if you mount into your home directory, don't be surprised where the Linux file system decides to start playing havoc with some of your file permissions. And it, it doesn't really worry for stuff like Plex, for example, or Jellyfin. But if you're starting to do stuff where you're deliberately always writing, then you may start to have challenges. So just something to bear in mind. And that's why I'd always recommend making those directories outside of um, your home directory. Anyway, if you have liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe. And as always, See you next time.